Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the Queensland Premier League Bowl Show, edition number seven. One more week of Premier League to go before the finals. <laughs> I am the host. You know, the Doge once conquered Halo one, two, and three <laughs> on legendary level with a broken Guitar Hero joystick. That's how good I am, Sweet. mate. Is that a good thing, yeah. is it? Yeah, no, it's more of an Age of Empires sort of bloke, mate. <laughs> and my co-host, of course, Mr. Baker, Sean Bakes. How you going, buddy? Very well, mate, very well. One more week to go. Yes, uh, things are starting to heat up. Obviously, uh, Big Muzzy, weekend. yeah, we're, uh, we're out of contention now for finals, but a bit of pride's nice. But, uh, yeah, there the are a few things that can change in the top five of the Premier side, so it's going to be a big week. Yeah, no, absolutely. Especially uh, the Helensvale Tweed game is a big one that's this weekend. That's massive, yeah, that's massive. So that's going to be huge. Uh, those boys will be um, especially sort of a shock loss to Helensvale at home against Drayton on the weekend. So yeah. um, that's going to be uh, a big one for them. They said they've been a bit scratchy all season, but they're a team that can certainly turn it around and come good come finals time. So Yeah, well, both of those teams obviously quality sides, so whichever one happens to get, uh, get through. You know, we haven't seen a winner in the, out of the top three for at least a decade. So, if, but if someone can do it, it's one of those two sides, two to Helen So, it's going to yeah, be, uh, be a big matchup. But the Broadbridge, didn't they come from? No, in the reserve grade they oh, did. Oh, yeah. Reserve yeah, grade, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, not the not the premier side. So <laughs> Having a couple of... Unless I'm wrong, it could be wrong. Not wouldn't be the first time. Hey? The premier... Oh, that was like, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. So... Before last year, <laughs> but, but that's my yeah. It hasn't happened a lot, so we are having a couple of technical glitches with our yeah uh, interaction with the viewers. So when your comments come through, um, put them through the, the Premier League Bowl shows page or uh, Gold Coast t- Tweed. I've got on my phone and the so. Gold Coast District Tweed. So if you want to comment, make sure you put your comments up on those two pages: mm-hmm. the Queensland Premier League Bowl Show or Gold Coast Live Stream, and we'll we'll get them. Just mm-hmm. make sure you keep them coming through. Tell me. Tell us who you think is going to win. Who's yeah. going to win the Premier League? It was the tips. And I'm looking forward to tips tonight. I reckon I made a couple back on you. You had no chance, mate. I absolutely... Oh, really? S- I, yeah, burnt, oh, really? I burnt in the this second round. I see. Yeah, I'm uh, sure I did that. I think... I, I, don't, I don't think you can catch me, actually. That's how good I'm oh, going. So, mate. Um, our wonderful sponsors of the show, uh, of course, are behind me, Smith mm-hmm. & Co Realty. Um, Shannon and his team do a fantastic job down here at Paradise Point and also, of course, to the Paradise Point Bowls Club, home of the mighty Dolphins. Um, they won't be featuring uh, in the finals this year, but still um, an awesome uh, venue and a club to come down to and have a feed and uh, have a good game of bowls. Yeah, it's a nice facility they got here, all the resources available to them. So. And our Premier League sponsors, of course, are Lawn Bowls to you. Um, BCIB insurance brokers of course the home of the Premier League finals is Club Musgrave um, this year which is another exciting weekend yes, coming up yes two Club years Muzzy. in a row for us and we haven't made the finals either time so maybe it's time to go somewhere else <laughs> <laughs> first year we were in we are come third and we made the finals yeah. And, uh, yeah next minute we're hosting and <laughs> next minute next minute <laughs> next minute um, uh, of course uh, welcome back to our Lovely producer, um, aka John Blackman, Robbie, <laughs> Robbie Allen. G'day, Robbie. Yeah, good evening, guys. Good to see you back here again. <laughs> and uh, of course, thanks to obviously his team, the Gold Coast live stream as well. So, also do a fantastic job doing the Premier League and uh, our show every week. Uh, let's get ripping into the results, mate. Uh, Double header yes. last weekend. Yes. Um, some, some big games, some big results. Yeah, yeah. I um, went to the kitchen and got my wooden spoon out, so that was lovely. Ooh, and, um, well, well uh, you brought it up first. It was I was bound to bring it up at some stage, but uh, yeah, you've done it first. But <sighs> haven't stopped drinking okay. since. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, just bear with me. Yeah, tough season for the mighty power. So yeah, sometimes you got to hit rock, rock bottom to bounce back up. So that's yes, the way it goes. That's, that's, and, uh, that's the plan, I think. Um, yeah, you Bel- recently, uh, a new new bowls coordinator. Obviously, there's been a lot of changes. You, you've done the job for a long time, and mm. uh, you stepped down, obviously, for other endeavours. And they had uh, had someone else in for a short period, didn't they? Or no, was it straight to Dino? Uh, I think they just had someone in the interim, like no yeah, one, no one no really one looking one. after it too much. Yeah. But and then obviously, Dean, when he's taking the job, yeah, uh, at the start of the new year. So you know, after his first season, he'll learn a lot from this, I'm sure. And yeah. I'm, I'm hoping he's already planning a, a relegation playoff type scenario, which will be later in the year. So it'll be interesting to see if any uh, other clubs are interested in coming back. We had Karina and 
Kawana were the two that missed out last year in the relegation playoffs. So whether they're both interested, I'm not too sure. But I believe Karina, uh, if their boys come back, because a lot of their players obviously went to other clubs after that to, to still take part of the comp. So if they all come back to the club and it's uh, all honky-dory, I imagine they'll be going again. But I'm, I'm not sure about Kawana. So. Yeah, it should Time be will tell. Yeah, we'll Time see, will tell. see how it all goes. So, um, yeah, it's a long way away now. So I'll <laughs> we'll just look forward to the... Uh, the finals and uh, <laughs> some bloke trying to hit his head on the roof anyway <laughs> uh, things yeah. you see at Paradise Point <laughs> and Wayne Hatchman says uh, you, you hear that you throw you pick your tips by throwing it at the dartboard mate so, <laughs> and, and it's working right. mate and it's working <laughs> Jackie Maria says I hear you're going to Musgrave Dojo oh it's news to me Jackie but um oh really oh that's uh, his membership's got to go through the correct channels <laughs> first and that's a it's a long process but all right, yeah. our first matchup. Who'd we have? We had Helensvale taking on Drayton. Uh, mm. So this was at Helensvale too. So a big win here for Drayton. But uh, Helensvale fifty-two on one rink, one and a half rink. Sorry, uh, got defeated by Drayton fifty-six on one and a half rink. So Brett Wilkie seventeen, Drew with Bo Brado seventeen, Nathan Rice nineteen, just got the better of Jakey Rin seventeen, and Kurt Brown sixteen going down to Kenta, the nicest bloke in Lawn Bowls, Treacher twenty-two. I was at the Go venue, on. but playing my own game in that game. But uh, I heard that uh, Kenta was just uh, saved a hell of a lot of shots and was uh, yeah. playing some fantastic bowls that, oh, uh, player, for that game. So. And that sort of service probably suit him nicely. Like it's, it's a, quite a nice service they got down there, and it's um, it's true and it runs well. So it's right up his alley. I imagine this time of year in Queensland, we all know our greens aren't always the best. So mm. a few of his games, he's probably. Um, not understood how <laughs> we play on this sort of stuff, but no, he's um, yeah, that would have suited him nicely, and obviously shows so his rink getting him over the line there. Yeah, it was good, good win, uh, good, good, good win for Drayton. That's that one massive. Yeah, we play him this week. So uh, Tweedhead seventy four defeated Hamilton forty. Uh, Gary Kelly twenty six defeated Shannon Ghetto's twelve. Corey Wedlock, 35, defeated Dean McGuinney, 8, and Peter Taylor, 13, def- uh, was defeated by um, Nathan Wise, 20. So, uh, yeah, big win there for the, the Ospreys. Uh, 34 shots is a big big win on mm-hmm. the grass there at uh, Helensville. Green was running fairly nice. The win was up, but uh, no excuses. Uh, uh, the boys, just Lukey Jones, actually, for um, the second there for Tweed, and that 35 shot that they win, he was on fire. Absolutely played... Fantastic, and Tills and Corey just did what they had to do. They yeah. were playing some, Corey played some really good balls when he had to. Um, yeah. yeah, GK just doing what he does. They had a good, they had a good win. Uh, Worrell signed him up recently for yeah. the platinum, <laughs> platinum pennant. Yeah, He's, Corey saw enough. He's like, yep, get this bloke down here. But <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, Luke, he was, Luke, he was going good. Yeah, we all know he's a good player, eh? But um, yeah, big yeah. win, big win. They needed and it too. Why has he got a good, good rink win there? That's a mm. solid win against Tails. Yeah, he had, a, he had a bit of gout too. He was struggling with his foot, his toe. Yeah, yeah, a few he, red but... wines. Oh, why is he? All righty, Robbie, we up next. Uh, we had Inogra Eagles taking on Paradise Point. This is over at Inogra. Uh, Inogra 79 on three rinks, defeated Paradise Point 45. Uh, Ali Forsyth 19, just getting the better of Blakey Nan 18. Ryan Big Digby 29, defeated Des Can 13. And Brendan Egan, 31, with a big win over Wilson Alexander. So is that his first game skipping, Wilson, for Paradise Point? He's been playing two a lot, so I don't know if they've yeah, I don't know if it was, things yeah, up an awful he, lot. He, had it, he hasn't been skipping all season, so yeah, that might have been his first game. But uh, yeah, coming up against yeah. old Dune Weird, who's been absolutely burned nice. in the last month or so, so... And he's, yeah, welcome back to skipping me. Enjoy your time in <laughs> on the carpet there. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, who we got next? <laughs> All right, uh, Broadbeach up against oh, let's skip Muzzy. This one. Let's skip this one. Broadbeach 77 uh, defeated Musgrave 53. Ryan George Peter Bester mm. 31 defeated oh, Sean Baker move 10. Along, move along. Uh, Aaron Richardson <laughs> Tees 22 defeated by uh, Leroy Schreiner 24. And uh, Omar Aaron Sheriff 24 defeated. Stephen Tong, 19. So a couple of close games there, mate. Just that top yes, one. Yes, ouch. Bit ouch, of, a, bit yep. of a belting. He copped it. He reckons uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with Muzzy, <laughs> mate. And this is uh, <laughs> served my dominance. But uh, Gary, I tell you what, Gary Lawson played exceptional that yeah. game. At three, from the very first end, he drew, you know, we're in the ditch rink on 15 and Inogra right near the, the far car park. And, yeah, it, uh, he was he played really well. And Bester did what Bester does and 
play some monsters when it counted, so you know, they were too good across the board and didn't feel I played that bad, but uh, yeah, things didn't quite come off for me and uh, we got absolutely demolished, so good old lawn bowls. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, Robbie, let's skip along from that one real quick. <laughs> uh, next up, we had Burley Heads and Capalabar. Burley Heads 54 on one and a half rinks, going down to Capalabar 56 on one and a half rinks. That would have been a cracking game. Uh, Dave Ferguson 14, going down to Jacob Nelson 21. Dale McWinney 22, getting the better of Dylan Fisher 17. And Benny Twist and Kane Nelson having an 18 all draw. So. Plenty of good games there. Um, Jacob's rink just uh, just doing the job for him and getting him over the line. Yeah, two shot win. That's a good. Would have been a good game to watch that one. Where was that? Well, that so that would have been at Burley too, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. would have been at Burley, and you got. I love watching those uh, real close sort of. Even though there's like a rink up, it's when it's close on the big board and you get to yeah, those last yes, five ends. Right. It's yep. pretty good. Love the atmosphere. And that's the beauty of the competition, really. When or any any format where you play that. That way is where you, you can lose your rink by 5, 10, 15, 20, but yet still have a, an overall, or an mm. impact on the overall result. Um, you know, you, you can play the cut down a five or draw a shot in the last few ends to get that yep. board over the line, and you're never out of it. Like, we look at the old Super Challenge event. I don't know you ever played Super Challenge. It was a great event, but if you're behind on your rink by 20 or up by 20, the game was pretty much over because once you won your rink, that was it. There was nothing to do with the overall result. Yeah, um, well, so keep, at least yeah, at least in keeps alive. Yeah, that's why it's the better event. But anyway, move along. I'm waffling. <laughs> Eljester sixty defeated Pine Rivers fifty nine. One shot win there to the All Stars, keeping their final types alive. I think they're sitting in fifth currently. So Eljester, uh, Cohen Lipton twenty two defeated Aaron Houston twenty. I think that's Huey's first loss as a skipper this season. Uh, Glennie Pitts, 19, uh, was defeated by Ryan Burnett, 20. And Nick Gosley, 19, tied with Chris Rosanna's 19. So, mm, what that, a game. That would have been a ripper. Yeah, that is close so all the way across a, the board. would have been a Burley as well, wouldn't it? So yeah, it yeah, would have been a Burley. Neutral game at, at Burley. One shot win, though. That's a, like, and look at the scores. Well, the like, ranks, well, the ranks is, yeah, the, the two shot win is what, is what did gets it. them over the line. Yeah. Great game yeah, of balls, that, that would have been. Often, yeah. It Comment. just shows you that uh, El Jester really are, you know, yeah, hit could, their be straps. A could be a genuine contender. Hit their straps. Yeah. Um, comment through if you watch that game and tell us how good it was. Uh, tell me what was good about that one because that was looks like a ripper. Mm-hmm. Old Mexican, if you're watching. <laughs> you're watching the footy. All righty, Sarah Reggie's. Uh, there's our results for the weekend. We'll run through them quickly. Uh, we had Inogra Eagles 73, just getting the better of Paradise Point 72, which was a uh, it was, well. We're at Inogra at that time. It was a pretty tight finish and a later finish, so it, was a, it would have been a close game. Uh, Broad Beach 76, 72. Eventually, after the the last bowl and one rink was played, it took about 20 minutes to play it and ended up somewhere near the boundary peg, but. Uh, Burley Heads, that's another story. Burley Heads 84 <laughs> defeated Capalabar 75. Uh, Al Jester 69 went down to Pine Rivers 82. Helensvale 82 got the better of Drayton in their reserve grade 62. And Tweed Heads continued on their winning ways with an 87 to 74 win over Hamilton Power. Yes. Good to see uh, Brody got to keep their pants on for the Reggies and uh, get a win up there. So they did, good. yes. It was a tight finish, and that's what I said. It was uh, there was two rinks out there, and one was three or four or five bowls ahead of the other, and that's how long we waited until we they eventually played their bowl. But I wonder if there's been a team in the competition ever in like reserve grade or top grade across the all the years that we've had Premier League where a team has won the Premier League and then finished last the following year. Uh, oh, well, who's who's don't all know, the don't know if it's ever been who's all the results gurus out? And there. it hasn't happened yet, by the way. They, they can still not finish last. So, yeah, um, there's still one more game to go. So, so that's, a, that's yeah. a big if. But who well, do they play too? They play Pine, I think, in the last game. So they do. It's certainly yeah. a challenge. I mean, it'll be at Pine Rivers too. So it's a big ask for them. Is that at Pine? It is at Pine, I believe. Yeah. Right. 
It's fine one of the lucky ones in the draw. They get, I think they get uh, the two single round home games as well as a double header. So they got a um, they got a strong Reggie side too, Pine. So they do. Well, that's mm. I think I tipped them. General, I think I tipped them last week to win the Reggie Reggies. Me Did last you? year. No, in my twelve kid, questions. That's I think. A kiss of death. Yeah. Kiss of death. Sorry, Pine, but you yeah, might as well leave your bowls alone. <laughs> 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 Not if my tips have been going like anything, mate. No, you, you go on. Blessed. You was blessed. All right. Uh, Hallensville, 54, defeated Hamilton, 47. Uh, nine, Brett Wilkie, 19, defeated Shannon Ghetto's, 13. Nathan Rice, 16, defeated by Nathan Wise, 23. And uh, Jason Constable, 19, defeated Dean McQuinney, 11. Yeah, so that was a good game of bowls, actually. It was actually a lot closer. I think we got back to the sort of one shot with a couple of events to play. And, um, yeah, the... Hounds I've got a couple of uh, late. Um, well, well, are you going to say lucky then? No, uh, late, lucky late, result, late, so mate. Hey, we're blessed with it. Was, it was a first time <laughs> playing on the before. carpet at Hounsville too. It was actually a <laughs> very, very enjoyable sort of it's carpet be, to play uh, on. It's going to be interesting to see when they finish here. Yeah, I, I, from what I heard, like late March was a rough starting time for the other green. Yeah, I, so I, I think that, I think it's they going to be a pretty impressive facility when they're finished. I, I think their plans are to try and have it ready by pennant. Wow, the second green so if they can get that done well, a lot of support structures already there with the other green in terms of poles yeah and, that's right and yeah all that sort of stuff so but yeah the new bar and stuff that's behind the green there look really look first class look really nice yeah that um, yeah beautiful. can they do a better job with the food yes they can but <laughs> other than that it was Taking really good stats. carpet was amazing salty. always good it's to catch salty. up with uh with Lurchy and the, the boys there at Helensville it was always uh, always good to catch up with those boys and have a good game of bowls. So, yeah, good window to the Hawks. Kept their season alive. Yeah, well, like we said, big weekend for them coming up. All right, here we have next to we had uh, Tweed Heads taking on Drayton. So, good win here for Tweed. 80 shots on three rinks, defeated Drayton on 44. Uh, Gary Kelly, 28, got the better of Bo Prado, 11. Corey Wedlock, 32. So, that's a big weekend for Corey. A couple of 30s. Taken on, uh, got the better of Jakey Rin, 15. And Peter Taylor, 20. Must have had a good game against Kenta, Kenta the nicest bloke in Lawn Bolts. Treacher, 18. So, it's a big win there for Tweed. That certainly, um, if they had lost that, that was their season over. So, and great in this, always a danger game. Like they're not a team you probably want to have to beat to get through because they've got yeah. plenty of good players amongst them. But um, they come out and did the job and basically left their uh, their fate in their own hands. Good to come away with five rinks too uh, for the weekend there for Tweed. That would have held them a lot as well, so um, yeah. Oh. Bruce Kirk says uh, they finished the Renos by August, so not, probably not quite by pennant, but a bit of the way through. Uh, Nogra 33 defeated by Broadbeach 70 so that's a big 37-shot win there to Brody um, at Anogra too. So that's a yeah. pretty good win there. Alley 11. We played him in the form, I think. Alley 11 defeated by uh, Ryan Best, 24. Uh, <laughs> Brian George Peter Best. <laughs> Ryan, sorry, Brian George Peter Best. <laughs> uh, Diggers, 14, defeated by Aaron T, 16. And Duna, 8. I was just talking him up too. Duna, 8, defeated by Aaron Sheriff, 30. So a big win there for the Bulls. Had done their two games at Broadbeach. Um, it's best as last uh, last day today at the Bulls. Yes, so, um, so I imagine a lot of people might have tuned in to his um, uh, little farewell presentation, which was done really well by Broad, Broadbeach and very classy. And you know, you could tell there's a lot of a lot of feeling in it. So well done to Broadie and how they handled it all. And congratulations, obviously, to Bester and everything he's achieved with that club not only professionally but on the bowls green as well so um all the best to him in his future endeavors which <laughs> which you're happy about we're certainly very happy about uh, <laughs> uh, he's done a great job over he the years. he's been there a long time to, and um, you know it's hard to talk too much about it because you know it's it's a big loss for Brody, obviously but he's been there for such a long time that as soon as anyone thinks of brawl beach they generally associate ryan with it and mm. Um, you know, they, I'm sure that club will always hold a big place in his heart. But uh, you know, things change, and kids now, and he, he lives close to the club, and you know, it's it's um, a, probably oh, it's looking forward to a new challenge, and I, we're certainly yeah. welcoming him with open arms. Oh, it's a huge, it's a massive like uh, get for obviously Musgrave and you know their endeavours and what they want to 
sort of do over the next few years, oh, I guess. Very, very driven at the moment. Like um, you've met Wayne Hatchman, the new general manager, who took over from Brian, and um, you know he's a businessman. He's, he's, he's a very smart man. He does what he does, and he does it well. Um, he's got a lot of plans for that club to move it forward, and not only successfully financially, but successfully in the bowls green as well. So you know it's going to be a testing first six months and we'll just uh, you know get everyone together and yeah. once, once Ryan actually starts we'll be able to start planning to move forward and whatnot but it is going to bring a lot of changes to the club um, so yeah that's all <laughs> I'll say <laughs> well, anyway congratulations yeah. Bester thank you Alrighty, our next get match up was Paradise Point Dolphins taking on the Musgrave Hill Pelican. I'm glad I get to read this one out, even though I copped another touch up. But uh, Blakey Nahan, <laughs> 19, defeated Sean Baker, 17. Des Can, 22, got the better of Lee Schrainer. And Kobe Barton went down to Stephen Tong, 21, who carried the big board and the whole rink had a blinder. So, well much done. needed win. Well done, Tongstar. Yeah. We can't make the five, but 16 bad, so if we have a good weekend, <laughs> we'll see what happens. But uh, Yeah, I, I thought you just needed two out of three to make it, but just didn't like... Two out of, yeah, if results had to go yeah. in way a bit more, two out of three could have been enough. Three out of three, I think, probably definitely would have guaranteed it for us. But, you know, we, we, uh, we had some bad games, we had some unlucky games, and we, two in particular, where we lost by one, uh, but we won two rings in the match. They, they hurt, um, mm. but in saying that, losing those games and getting two rinks up helps you with your rinks, so if we had been equal on points, our rinks more than likely would have been better than anyone yeah. else, so that's one positive we had is our rinks were good, so if we could just get those Ws up, we were a chance, and beating Brody would have been huge. If we had to beat Brody in the morning, and um, then that would have made this the afternoon game, you know, while we were all obviously trying our best, but it would have had a bit more motivation to it and obviously this weekend would have been huge for us but wasn't yeah. a B Brody were too good and we're not relegated so we'll look forward to next year Mayday <laughs> well the bunnies are in <laughs> finally <laughs> alright uh, Burley 49 uh, defeated by Pine River 64 uh, Dave Ferguson 19 defeated by Aaron Houston 20 Dale McGuinney tw uh, Shillington 20 uh defeated Ryan Burnett 14 and Ben Twist 10 defeated by Chris Rosanis 30 so a massive Ouch. win there to Chris yeah. and Poppy and Caitlin and Breeny so a uh, massive uh, massive win there because uh, barely that was two losses at home yep um, about That's, to become yeah. three on the weekend so um, people will start calling the Pelicans soon <laughs> we're no good at home but <laughs> <laughs> we don't even get to play at home at home mate so uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah big uh Good comeback win How after How many that. single... Do you have a single round home game? Yeah, when, you did. You first round against you guys. First round, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah so you minimum three games, mm. maximum four, yeah. Mm. Um, the way you said that, this wasn't sure if you didn't have any other home games outside of your double header. But nah, we didn't. You did, the first round. Yeah, the first round, round and double header, yeah, that's it. Yeah. We had a double header and a <laughs> single round too, but... Like. Yeah. Or, that's not <laughs> what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll get it. Get it yeah. <laughs> I've missed the plot, obviously. Uh, all righty, next up we had Al Jester getting the better of Capalabar and keeping um, Al Jester winning ways up. That's how many is that on in a row from that? Four or five on the trot? Might be six. I reckon it's yeah. six. Someone, someone from Al Jester, let us know how many on the trot you won. So I think they're on it's 10 uh, points, so it must have been five. Cohen Litfin with another tight win, 21 20 over Jacob Nelson. Glenn Pitts, 35, defeated Dylan Fisher, 15. And Nick Gosley, 23, just going down to Kane Nelson, 24. So, uh, that's a, yeah, it's a big win there for Al Jester. And I said they've uh, they got a big last game this uh, this week. <coughs> Excuse me. But, a, um, yeah, good opportunity to, to secure their spot. They played Paradise Point, so I imagine there'll be a bit of feeling in that game. But we'll get into that later. We'll yeah, there the will teams. be. Yeah, that will be interesting. Um, but Al, Al Jester, they're going... 
lot of lot of people had written, yeah, written them off. Them off so, yeah. yeah, I was them, one of those well, people. And uh, them and Nogra, like after yeah, the first three or yeah. four rounds, everyone had written a Nogra off, and now they're a chance. Like if they are, if they're the win, well. Yeah, if they they might have to win on they three. They are the slimmest of all chances. They but are, but a chance is a chance. A chance is a chance. It is bowls. Sport is funny, um, particularly lawn bowls. But yeah, now I'm, I'm on the wagon now. I kind of hope I'll just to make it. Like they've never made the finals in Premier League, so it'd be kind of cool to sort of see them sneak in there and uh, watch my good mate well, Nico yeah. sort of come out and then <coughs> me. get a couple of wins there. Should be good. It's gonna yeah, it's gonna be big um, weekend. It's gonna be a bit of filling in the game, I think. Uh, the Reggie's results for the weekend uh, for the uh, for the second round was the Nogra 84 defeated Broadbeach 74. Oh. Paradise Point 77 were beaten by Musgrove Hill 89. Burley Heads 82 defeated Pines 76. Algesta 85 defeated by Capalaba 92. Helensville raised the bat raised 100 the bat. up against oh. Hamilton 68. I didn't know that was that game <laughs> until I read across. Is there a st- and, uh, statistic for most 100 games against here, I wonder? No, nah, Hamilton are going all right. They had actually they were a chance of the finals until the weekend, so is that Reggie's. Um, Tweetheads 88 uh, defeated Drayton 73. So yeah, yeah for the week, and here's we'll, the stuff that we will neither commentator want to see this week right now. But uh, the, the ladder looks yeah. Well, the um, looking back by memory, I think Tweed have the minor premiership sewn up for the reserve grade, and, and the top five is already certain. But we'll, we'll see in a minute. But I remember looking at it, reserve grade. For, yeah, whack the reserve grade up first, wait by memory, the, the, yeah, the top five are definitely sealed, but I'm um, pretty sure Tweed already have the reserve grade locked up for their minor premiership. Is the reserve uh, the grade reserve ladder? Grade, yes, yeah, they, they do. Yeah, they already got it locked up. Yep. So we've got Tweed Heads on top, 18 points, our minor premiers for the year. Uh, Pine River's behind them, 15. Another win will secure their spot in second. Uh, Hellensvale third, Inogra fourth, and Burley fifth, all on 14 points. The finals so are locked up. Basically, the those it's that third, fourth, and fifth are just playing for third spot. Obviously, that well, third second, spot. Well, second, second to fifth. No, well, if Pine Rivers win, yeah, they um that'll put them on 17 points. But if they lose, yeah, well, that's okay. And so the three if, teams below them win. Yeah, so Pine Rivers are playing the team on the bottom of the ladder. Yeah. At Pine Rivers, yep. but yeah, but yeah, if they if Pine Rivers win, they can't lose second spot. Is what I said. No, 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 no. <laughs> but they can go. But they can go to fifth. They can do if they do. Yeah. If they do lose, they can drop down to fifth and yep. lose that second bite at the cherry. But that's assuming Burley, Inogra, or Helensville don't play each other, which they don't, I believe. So, no, Helensville play Tweed, Burley play Hamilton, and Inogra play someone else. Yeah. So if Pine lose and those three win, they can drop down a fifth, which would be a big difference. Obviously, it gives it loses that second bite of the cherry. I'm going to say Drayton. The Hellensville and Nogra and Burley all playing for that third spot. What's their rinks like? So Hellensville got the better rink. So if Hellensville win, you'd have to assume that they get through. They definitely, Burley can't um, can't catch them. And even a Nogra is going to be struggling. Well, yeah. Hellensville pretty much have third spot sewn up if they win. No one will be able to catch them on rinks. But anyway, in six months, nah, we've got yeah. Capalabar. Then we've got Drayton, Hamilton, Paradise Point, Musgrave Hill, Al Jester, and our reigning premiers, Brawl Beach. So there's our reserve grade ladder. Our premier grade now. Dojo, I'll let you do the honours. Thank you. <laughs> I'm <laughs> waffling again. No, no, one, <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to read this out of the uh, either of us yeah. on the table tonight. <laughs> no, no, sure no, we'll do it. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. So get there. Broadbeach, uh, eight, uh, Broadbeach are on top on 18 points. Pine River's on 17. Burley Heads on big gap between second and third. Uh, Burley on 12. Tweed Heads on 12. Algester on 12. This is where it gets interesting. Helensvale are on 10. And Inogra are on 10. So uh, the rink wins are what's important there, especially for Anogra and Algesta. Um, so well, Algesta obviously have the uh, the raw end of the deal there. They um, their rinks aren't the best, but again, they play one of the teams that are somewhere near the bottom. So Algesta are every chance of winning three rinks. But if they do, they want to hope that Tweed doesn't win. On more than two rinks, like if 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 Algesta win and Tweed only win on one rink and Burley get beat, Algesta can jump up a third. 
Yeah, well, what's interesting as well is that Elgis are going to lose on one rink, and if Tweed get beaten, they still jump them. No, they won't. Yeah. No, because their margin, they'll be on such... No, no, if, no. If you're assuming Tweed don't win a rink... That's right. Yeah. So yeah. if Tweed get beaten on three rinks, and Elgis will win on one rink, but they need to win by 50 or 47... Yeah, but because it's wins margins. Inogra like Inogra are a sniff, but like their rink wins don't do them any favors. They are basically relying, but they need to win on three, and then they'll just lose on three. Yeah, that's the only way they can get in. Yeah, Helensville just need to beat Tweed Heads. Um, Now they beat Tweed Heads two rinks to one. That won't. They'll They'll pass them. No, Helensville need to win on two rinks. That'll put them on eighteen rinks, and that'll put it seven and a half. half, So. If they um, if they happen to go one and a half, Tweed have the um, well, Tweed will get it on anyway. But yeah, Tweed have Tweed have a good margin. That's what helps them because obviously in, in well not obviously but in Premier League Queensland it's uh, win points, rink wins, and then margin. Yeah. So if the rink wins do happen to be square, then then it comes down to your margin, which Tweed are far ahead of those everyone around them. See, technically, Al Jazeera can lose on one rink. And how just could lose and stay there? Yeah, and how and Helensvale if Tweed, win if Tweed win and Ogre lose, no one can pass it. Yeah, if Elgester lose on one rink and Helensvale win on one rink, they don't pass Elgester. Oh well, yeah, well I suppose the only threat for Elgester is losing on three rinks, isn't it? Not even then, because if you know, Helensvale need a win, but if if Helensvale and Ogre both lose, Elgester can't drop out. Yeah. So, but yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah. Look, looking forward to seeing these match up. Who plays who? What sort of uh, what sort of games we got this week? As our skippers list, so Mr. Aaron Sheriff on top. He's played nine, one, eight, had one draw, so he's unbeaten with a uh, margin of eighty six. Behind him, we have got Chris Rosans, Dale McWinnie's going very well. Nathan Rice, Ryan George, Peter Besser after his uh, good weekend. Colin Lifton, Ryan Burnett, Gary Kelly, Aaron Houston, and Brendan Egan rounds off our 10. And uh, Sean Baker has dropped well and truly <laughs> down the list. <laughs> Doge is top on the Hamilton list at 66, mate. Yeah, so that's, yeah, uh, that's, right. yeah, that's right. something to put on the resume, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, Reggie's uh, top is uh, Alan Cumberford from Helensvale. Hasn't lost a game. Got to love that. 10 from 10. Uh, Solid effort. Get him in the top side. Uh, and also another Helensvale, one on two. Gene Ayton, um, Neville Jenkins, Aiden, uh, Adam Liddell, Jack Moffat, Justin Knight, Andre Buck, Rick Bryan, Darren Kelso, and Corey Fuller around out the top ten there. So all those skippers having a good season. So mm-hmm. well done to those guys. And it's Rick, Rick Brain. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Yep. Well, the human, the human brain actually reads the first and two letters and the last two letters and fills in everything in between so it's I uh, can't wait for Baker can't wait for Baker's <laughs> does a little it bit of, a little bit of trivia for you <coughs> alright tips tips for the next this week's rounds this is the important How we going, part Robbie yeah. give What's us the, the situation, score John mate? hit me with it ok just, just let me get this up on the screen for you guys oh, but suspense at the at the moment uh, Doge uh only scored four in the first round of last weekend, round nine. And Bakes, you got five. So you Made caught one up back. within two of them. But I feel there's 10, a butt. Yeah, there's a butt coming. <laughs> there's a definitely a butt. <laughs> <laughs> Doge in round ten had six winning calls. Boom. And four of the rink uh, scores uh. he got correct. Well, so ten from twelve. 10 from 12. My day. Uh, Bakes, you Don't got... Don't uh, worry about what I did, mate. You got three <laughs> right. <laughs> six of the winners. And one oh, right. Can I be cool? the rink result. However, that was a game that your rink result that you got correct, you actually lost on the uh, selection of who you wanted. Oh, so, so is this the... Cancel each other out. Is the last round the power play in? <laughs> uh, even with a power play, you're in deep strife. What about if we have like a pick the margin or something? <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a chance somewhere, Robbie. You would have to ace. What is more. the score? What is the score? Just so I just so I want to hear it. 
62 to 54. Oh, oh 62 54. It's embarrassing. Shit. It's embarrassing. Yeah. The spoon wine, Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, Robbie. Thanks for that, mate. That's great news, buddy. Yes, yeah. Don't you have something to do? Or <laughs> oh, and South are catching back. 16-12. Oh, no. Broncos have scored. So it was 12 all. Alrighty, Next week's game is here. Looking to this. Some, uh, our power play tipping weekend. So first up, this is the this is the match of the round. I think it's safe Absolutely. to say. Absolutely. Tweed Heads taking on Helensvale. Uh, Gary Kelly will play Brett Wilkie. Kurt Brown's been moved to three. Is this okay. a live stream game? No. no. Live streams, uh, this one, Al Jester and Paradise Point. Oh, yeah. uh, Corey Woodlock will take on Nathan Rice. It'll be another cracker. And Peter Taylor taking on Matthew Lucas. I think that's Captain's first skipping game this year, isn't it? Yeah, well, he was playing three for Lurch last week. He was playing two when we played him. He was playing two for Lurch when we played. Oh, yeah, he might have been playing two. But he's yeah, got, I think he's got young three. Isaac Morn playing three for him. He, Age as far as I knew, he was, yeah. um, he was leading the house down. But Ron Wilson skipping, who was playing three, so they've had plenty of changes. Helen's Vale, so. They've had heaps. The changes yeah, Adam Mike was playing for Rice last week. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where, uh, the result of this one. I. Uh, where is this? This is at Tweed, obviously. A single yep. round yep. left on the side. I'm going to back Tweed in here. I think um, they're going to get the job done and hold it in their spot in five, and they're going to win it from there. So, yeah, Tweed 2-1. Oh. Well, I back Tweed for the Premiership title, so... Um Helensville definitely they need to win. They, they look they got beat by Drayton. They weren't amazing against us either. So uh, yeah, I, I can't go past Tweed either, mate. Two one, two under Tweed. Although Helensville they do need to win, and they when they backs to the wall, they generally come up with the goods. But I just can't see him beating the Ospreys, rolling into finals. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Don't remember the footy, <laughs> Eldesso against Paradise Points. Uh, this is the live stream game down at the All Star Arena. Uh, big game. In there. This is uh, a bit of feeling in this one. Um, Colin Liffin up against Wilson Alexander, who's skipping again. Glenn Pitts up against Desi Can. That will be a cracker. Obviously, Jay Cross in that as well. Two ex All Stars going back to their home club for the first time. Yeah. And uh, Nico <coughs> Gosley up against Kirby Barton, uh, Judd Percy, another ex-All Star as well. So, um, yeah, that's going to have Curtis some... Curtis Black. And Curtis Black, yeah. sorry, yeah. There's, they're going to have some feeling in that game. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of Brotherton in this well. one, I think. Brother was and, um, an ex-All Star, I think. You know, Al Jess obviously playing to maintain this as far as they'll know at the time. Obviously, they, we like we talked about before, they could lose and hold their spot. But they, as far as they know, they'll be playing for their spot. We got Matty Baus coming up. Uh, I see playing three for Colin Litfin this week, so that's a big boost. Um, but yeah, Des Cam versus Glenn Pitts, that's going to be a cracker. Hopefully, we, uh, we can somehow maneuver that one on the old live stream. <laughs> 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 yeah, be a bit in that one, I think. But um, no, this is going to be a great game. I think Paradise Point are going to be up for this because they're. Uh, Everything that's going on and uh, some things that have been slung around. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be a fiery old battle. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, gonna, it's, you, it's, I, did I read this one? Out? You did. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm taking. Oh, I'll quick. Just, over just waffling here. again, mate. Uh, yeah. Look, I'm kind of keen to see. I've back to Helen's to lose, so I kind of want to LJS this to get up this one. I'm going to go the All Stars two one. Uh, I think uh, Desi might sneak home. But yeah, El Jester. Yeah, well, I'm obviously trying to make up points, mate. So I think Paradise Points are going to really fire up for this one. They're going to win 3 0. Oh. Boom. Nice. But El Jester will still make the finals. Ooh. Little spanner there. <laughs> All righty, next up we've got Pine Rivers and Broadbeach. This will be for the minor premiership. Uh, whoever wins this will get the minor premiership. Uh, Aaron Houston will take on Ryan George, Peter Bester. Ryan Burnett takes on Aaron Tees. And Chris Rosans will take on Aaron Sheriff. So, 
Pine River's at home, but you know there's plenty of names on the Broad Beach list that have played at Pine River's a lot, of, a lot, particularly recently. So this is going to be a great game. Um, Aaron Houston, I think a week last week told me to stop backing against Pine, and I might make some points back in our tipping comp, and I. I backed against them and uh, it come through for me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna back Brawl Beach here. Uh, I saw them at Anogra last week and they were very impressive. I don't think uh, I don't think Pioneer is any harder than Anogra, so I'll, yeah, I think Brawl Beach only two good, two one on this one. <coughs> uh, I will go the Pirates two one. I think our old Hubert will uh, get the better of uh, George Peter Bester, who would not have recovered by. <laughs> after tonight yet and um, and I think uh, big Chris uh, Rosanis is going to try and beat uh, Sheriff by 14 plus to get the top skipper award <laughs> <laughs> yeah it should be a great game either way mm. should be a great game a couple of crackers so far is it my turn? it is mate yeah. Burley up against the mighty Hamilton Power uh, Fergo up against Shannon Giddos, Dale McWinnie up against Dean McWinnie, and um, that'll be a good one. And uh, Benny Twist up against Wisey. Um, so what do you guys throw your all your names in a bucket this week and shake it up and just no, throw them on the floor? No, and, I know? think uh, we've done that every other week. We do our unchanged this week. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> is this the uh, first game without changes? Or? I think it is. I think it is. Oh, um, look out, Burley! I am going to go the power. Uh, I'm going to go the power 2-1. Mm. This is a shame because I, I really, I, do, I agree with you. I think, um, I think you've got too good a side for things not to go right for you at some point, and I think you guys will be up for this game, even though the, you know, the, the spoon is already locked up. That really doesn't mean much when the game actually starts. Uh, a bit of pride and you know obviously McWinnie versus McWinnie there's going to be a bit of feeling in that one but again I need I need to somehow make some sort of miracle and get some points back so I'm going to go Burley on one and a half yeah I think you guys will get up this week I think this is your week mate I think it's our week too hmm Alrighty, next up we've got Capalabar <laughs> taking on Inogra. This will be at Capalabar. Uh, Jacob Nelson will take on Harley McDonald. Brad Piper v. Ryan Digby. And Kane Nelson taking on Brendan Egan. So, a few big games there. Capalabar, obviously, like us, they, they had no chance to make finals, but um, they could certainly spoil Inogra's slim hope mm. just by A, winning a rink, but also obviously by winning the game as well. So, it could actually drop in Ogre, not a long way down, obviously not all the way down, but from where they are, they could yeah, drop a few spots. But uh, at, a, at Capella Bar, I know Kane's been a little crook this week, so whether he bounces back in the next couple of days, but I think uh, I think they'll be up and about for this. Uh, and Capella Bar will get up 2-1. Uh, I'm yeah, I'll, uh, I'm going the same. No, Palabar 2 1. Weak. Let's go the opposite, mate. Come on. Make it <laughs> yeah. Is that everyone? Is that it? Mm. No. no. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. Drayton up against the mighty Pecklins. Uh, Bo Prito uh, up against Sean Baker. Jakey Rin up against Dean Drummond. And Hayden Vogler up against Stephen Tong. Yeah, we mixed our sides up a little bit this week as well. And we welcome Callum back into the top side. We thought uh, this would probably be one game he'd fire for, especially. So if I'm struggling after a few wins, I may get him down the big end. But no, we... Um, yeah, it's uh, Dean Drummond skipping his first game. So big game for us, as every game is. Yeah, uh... So you got Chris Leave leading there too, mate. Um, Joel Downey. But yeah, I'm going to go Drayton. Nice. Thank you. Ah, pleasure. Um, Drayton 2 1. Musgrave on 3. Steve Glasson playing 2. Just notice there on Hayden Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about that rink, but um, the other two rings should go all right. 
That'll fire up Tongi a little bit. Let's see Glasson playing two against him. To perk him up. Yeah, I think Tongi will win. I think that'll be the rink that wins. I think the other two. Will that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, all right, so that's all our. Uh, you got any comments like there, mate? No, I've nothing, got nothing lots of people donuts. watching, but nothing come. Yeah, well, Stevie Brown says, uh, "Is there some team changes after this afternoon's roll up?" I was a bit short on a few ends, so <laughs> thanks for noticing that, mate. And making a point of that, to everyone, that's good. Nah, he, need, he needs <laughs> to. He needs to be short, that uh, Muzzy, because yeah. when he goes to the Drayton, it'll be. Um, you don't want to practice well. It'll be much faster. You, that short ones become like foot past. Oh, oh, the are in the end. Oh, Reese. Go to the Bronx. All right. So, big weekend coming up for the last round of Premier League. Next weekend is the finals weekend at mm. Musgrave Hill. Uh, make sure you get your tickets. They are selling fast uh, mm. to get down for Luckily, the finals. Tickets are free. So, <laughs> if just come on down. Oh, mate, it costs a bit to get into that old uh, bar at the it's camp the bar, mate. Yeah. No, there's no, we're not doing a camp bar this year. It took away too much uh, clientele from our main bar and some clubs didn't pay their bar tab I won't name who they are but uh, we'll be seeing them this year nice one Pine yeah. <laughs> was it Pine? <laughs> it, was it was Pine, pine. <laughs> it's because the gym was blind um, alright it's time for the Baker's Dozen oh, dun, 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 dun. Nice. Been... as I said in the live and five the Doge gets to ask the Baker's Dozen yeah, this week so that's the tough one we always get Shawnee asking the Baker's Dozen because it's his little segment but because he got me last Ooh. week I'm going to have a few questions shot at him this week um, remember to comment on the Queensland Premier League Bowl Show page and the Gold Coast live stream page yep. if you have any questions for Bakes but uh, we'll kick it off with um of course, uh, Baker's Dozen. Mate, what's your favourite thing to bake? Uh, well, I can't say that I've done much baking. I'm a baker <laughs> by blood, not by trade, but I did make a really nice focaccia bread once. Ah, once. So, yeah, once. I, I watched a YouTube video and did it all, and it came out beautiful. I've never <laughs> done it since. <laughs> You're on to a winner there, Jenna. Well done, mate. Yeah. Uh, Half arse. All right. <laughs> This is a um, quick fire question. Okay, you have to shoot. ask her as, you have to answer as fast as you can. Okay. How fast can you name your kids youngest to oldest? And birthdays. And birthdays? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, just youngest to oldest. Uh, George, Anna, Jack, Kate, Emma. Wrong. Youngest uh, to yeah. oldest. Hey? Youngest. Oh, to youngest to oldest. oldest. Oh, well, sorry. Emma, Kate, Jack, Anna, George. <laughs> That's not bad. Not bad. Uh, the birthday is uh, <laughs> the youngest first, so 11th, no, 9th. Too is, slow. <laughs> Next question. Uh, what can, <laughs> I hope Jana's not watching. No. What can we expect coming out of Musgrave in the near future? Lots, mate, lots. Can you give us an insight? Or? Uh, well, it's no one thing to put your finger on. I think the club in, as a whole is just trying to improve. Um, you know, our facilities are improving. We've re- more recent upgrades that we've finished. Uh, inside the club we've got more in plan uh, obviously with a couple of new jobs being made available to not only myself but Bester and um, it's a real push in the direction of, of bowls in the club and just trying to change a few of the um, reputations the club may have in the past in terms of culture and whatnot. And mm-hmm. um, that's good yeah we uh, we got lots of big plans mate and you know our biggest plan eventually is probably undercover greens and renovations to that extent but uh, yeah that's a few years away yet but uh, like I said before Wayne Hatchman's all on top Something of it to work all. towards yeah he's um, he's on top of it all he's got big plans in a certain time frame so we'll see what happens alright this is a big one Jado's watching too so uh, going oh, out okay. the limb he says Broadbeach Bulls back to back El Jado um, mate this question actually features you Jado this is an Ooh. A and B question so you got an A and B answer okay you got to answer A or B okay alright now you've won 14 Queensland state titles. Mm-hmm. There's a record by any player ever for state titles in Queensland. Um, which one is the most memorable? Mm. You have A with Doge, Big Jimmy, and Robbie Wild, <laughs> or you have B with Doge, Nugget, and Jado. <laughs> uh. I'm going to say the Robbie Wild, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Jado, you're yeah, gone. Yeah, I think it might have been one of the uh, one of the last things I might have won with him. I don't know. It probably was, to be fair. Because that was uh, at Tweed, and I'd Tweed, already yeah. a member of Vicky Point, and I think it wasn't long after that he um, he stopped playing for a little period. So, 
You know, last week when you asked me the questions, I said Tweed was one of my least favourite places. We've never done well there, but we want to stay tight. Yeah, that's yeah, why. Uh, that's why I looked at you funny, mate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How many pairs of shoes do you reckon you've gone through? Hmm. Lawn bowl shoes, in that total, is. In total, yeah. or just in the last in decade? In total. Because ha- oh, well, that's what happens, isn't it? The toe goes yeah, through. Yeah, but it hasn't been that bad my entire bowling endeavour. It's really only been the last probably 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> so I reckon it'd be probably four pairs of shoes a year. So what's that? Uh, 60. 60, sh- 60 pairs. Add a few on for overs and unders. I'd say seventy pairs of shoes. Seventy pairs of shoes in mm-hmm. the last fifteen what years. Just bowl shoes. Just bowl shoes. How did you ever thought about getting a nail clipper? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> nail clipper. <laughs> yeah, to cut your toenails. So you don't put your oh, toes. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, no. Um, I've got weird toes apparently. So Janet tells me it's the weirdest thing she's ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your greatest bowls achievement? Uh, to be to be honest, I had something very early in my career, which I tend to go back to, is would have been two thousand and five. I won the uh, an old event that they don't run anymore. It was called the Australian Sundown and Mile on Five Side. Uh, I think I was about nineteen, and um, back then they used to do the draw. They say so if you play one year, they do the draw that year for the following year. And I remember we were there one night with the, the last night of the. 2004 event we were having dinner and the drink and everything they do and they called out the sections and it was New South Wales Queensland Victoria and Northern Territory and obviously I was a Northern Territory player and I was playing the singles and I went through the section unbeaten and went on to win the gold medal in the singles so it's pretty fair something I'll never forget and um, I was down I, just, I know I had to score I think it was about 14 or 15 against Glasson who was playing for New South Wales and I was down 99 and I got up to win 25, 21. That was Fair. yeah, something I'll never ever forget. Good answer. Um, mm. So, although your favourite state titles are Robbie Wilde, your Australian Open, two Australian Opens with Robbie, you brushed for that, mate. Well, no was, good. Uh, and no, back good, to back good. Australian pairs with Jada was obviously very memorable too, but for me personally. Yeah, Jada, you're getting brushed all over the shop tonight, mate. For, yeah, for me personally, that was that was probably something I'll never yeah, forget. No, it's a good answer. That's a good one. I'd, I didn't even know about that. No, one. I never, well, I don't talk about myself much. Uh, Unless I'm at home. <laughs> do you still have ambitions to play for Australia? No, nah, no. Nah. Nah. Them, them days good. are long gone. I um, long gone. made myself available for selection again two or three years ago, and um, yeah, nothing came of it. So that's fair enough. I, if you look at the beer, there's a few greys getting in there, so I'm probably getting on a bit now. But uh, yeah, no, I. Uh, so still looking better than Robbie does gone, down there, mate. So, so you're going right. No, <laughs> Good on you, though. Thanks. Yeah, no. You... All right. Um, now, you won a Premier League title with uh, Hamo in 2016. Mm-hmm. Have you ever won another one? Nope. Ever no. before that or after? No, I got two runner ups. Yep. Got a runner up with Mackenzie Park many, many moons ago against Helensvale out of Beachmere Bowls Club. That was back when they were Case and Lurch and Glowboy and mm. Wiz and they were all in their prime. You know, that was the red hot thing when I first moved to Queensland. It was Helensvale and no one else really. Mm. Um, but And then I'll run her up as, again to them, to Helensvale, at, uh, when I played for South Tweed. But no, only one and only Premier League titles were Hamilton and we would reach on three rinks in the second green playing East West. Mm. And that was what secured our, our um, spot in the top three. Mm. And, then yeah. we beat Helensvale, Broad Beach, Helensvale to win it. So yeah, uh, good good culture, good culture. Yeah, that's champion team will always be the team of that's champions. That's it. That's it. Oh, I, I actually didn't know the answer to that. That's why I asked the question because I didn't know if you had won another one. Um, what's your favourite home cooked meal to come home to? Uh, Jana makes a beautiful spag bowl. Um, but I love her platter dinners. We have at home our, our platter dinners yeah. where she just puts all this Slimy yummy stuff, stuff on the yeah. big platter yeah. and all the kids just seagull in and <laughs> finger everything. But I love those too, actually. Yeah, no, nah, she does a she does a great platter dinner and it's my favourite thing I think. <clears throat> great platter dinner. Mm. Thanks for and the then, invite, and, Jenna. And then dessert. <laughs> um, <laughs> a forehand or backhand runner. Mm. What if I have to hit it to win the game? 
Or just like a Yeah, well, well, if, you, if you've got a shot that's, you know, you've got uh, one down probably, the line. I'll probably like my forehand. A forehand runner? Yeah, and generally if I have weight to play and I have a choice, I'd more than likely pick my forehand, whether it's uh, arriving or swinging or going straight at it. I, I like the forehand. I think it's... Um, all right. Will the Titans... Mm, no. <laughs> Do better than the Pelicans on the ladder this year. Uh, well, we're a chance to come on six, so I certainly hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but no, probably not, because we've only got 12 teams in our comp, and usually um, we're below that 12 mark. But I hope so. Desi Haslam might bring a bit of, bit of work ethic into the into the side, but uh, Gold Coast is notorious for uh, poor sporting teams. Mm. Probably part and parcel for the lifestyle for these players They're, I know it's not extravagant as a lawn bowler's lifestyle but they live a pretty good life in rugby league and yeah. NFL players yeah, and that fair, so fair. I know lawn bowlers is better but you know I think they're um, pretty <laughs> second last question mate what would you change in the game of bowls probably the foot fault rule no <laughs> no, um, <coughs> no I um, what would I change Oh, I don't think there's any one particular thing. I, I think the biggest issue in bowls is not in the rules but the administration. I think uh, where we get a lot of things wrong in our great game is, is how it's run and uh, the approach we take towards players, particularly entering like club championships and club events. Like I've been to a lot of clubs now and you see a lot of in-house fighting in regards to mm. so-and-so can't play this, they need a forfeit, so-and-so can't play this, they need it. Like it's... Um, I think the the administration of the game and and even and it goes higher than club level course, but I won't get into that. I'll get myself into trouble. But I um I think sport lawn bowls is one of the few sports where your physical attributes, which includes your gender, has nothing to do with your skill level and all that. So yeah. it should just be most things should be open. Um, uh, I don't think the games run correctly, but. You know, that's just, uh, there's no yeah. real way to say what one particular thing it is for me because there's different formats, there's different this and that, and outside of the foot fault rule, I think uh, the only thing wrong with that game is how we run it. But. And the lucky last, the 13th question mm -hmm. is, who's going to win the Premier League? Not Musgrave Hill, so <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> no, I, um, I think Broadbridge going to be hard to beat. You know, a bit of a farewell for Besta. Mm. Um They'll enjoy our greens. The greens should be weather permitting, of course. Greens should be pretty nice um, come the finals weekend. I'll um, be going out next week and giving all the uh, the mats a good high-pressure hosing so that Pine Rivers don't get upset about the mats. But we've got brand-new lights going into the green, so well, it's going to be lit up perfectly. We've spent thousands of dollars on new lights. Uh, we've got some mats all nice and shiny and... Yep. Kitties will be polished. So All I mean, asked was who's going to win the Premier League, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have a little stab where I can. I'm waiting for 9 p.m. for this poem to come out. <laughs> but um, but no, I, uh, yeah, Broad Beach. Short answer. Oh, sorry, I'm waffling again. Broad Beach. Yeah. And who are they going to play? Broad Beach are going to play Tweed. Broad Beach and, and Tweed. And even though I've Tweed, I think they're going to get all that way, but just stumble at the end because Broad Beach just. So you think Pine's going to do good. a double knockout again? Or? I think so, mm. yeah. I hate to say it. I think Huey's hopefully going to have a good weekend because even though he gave me a touch-up last time I played him and he's got Robbie in his rink. But, um, yeah, I just think uh, for such a team a team that performs so well so consistently when it comes to just a few mm. important games, uh, maybe they fall away a little bit. Oh. Broncos. He kicks this. The Doge's on here. 16 <laughs> points. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're out of questions. It's tough. It's, yeah, I am. Well done. Baker's right. dozen. Thank you Gone by much. the Doge for the first time ever. And, <laughs> yeah, who did you tip last week? You was going to win it? Tweed, you stuck with Tweed, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I yeah. stuck with Tweed. And who I were they? Like, I, never, I didn't think yeah. I asked you who they were beaten. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, yeah, it's probably... I'm, I, I feel like it's the same. I hope it is, because then we get to have a bit of like more yeah. rivalry. Um, no all or nothing, so the tipping comp's already mine, so... Um, and no I think, one likes. I think, no, no one I, likes to show. You can have the tipping comp <laughs> trophy and the spoon, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, Pine will um, win the Reggies. Um, yeah, no, I think Tweed are going to hold that. I think 
Tweedy going to get um, runner-up and winner? And it's going to be one of their best seasons yet. Uh, but uh, they seem to be dominant in the Reggie, so I think Tweedy going to win the Reggie. Hmm. Seeing as they didn't ask me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Baker's double dozen, 14 <laughs> questions. But. Uh, all right, this new segment. Now, now the next segment, uh, what, I'm, I'm on again. Breaks my balls. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Look, I, I, look I, I'm on this one. I know, I'm smiling too. Like, I always smile, breaks my balls. Um, I'm not should smiling be this an week. angry fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm going on about prices of things. Like last oh, week, I was about fuel. You're not wrong. Uh huh. You're not wrong. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't. Yeah. The fuel, like week mm. four was BA and like the BPL. This week it's um, uh, it's lawn bowls, mate. Like just lawn bowls to buy in themselves. Like since what the last two or three years, mate, they've gone up ridiculous amounts of money. Mm. It's That's close to. But- yeah, it's inflation. It's inflation, but the fuck, <laughs> mate. They've been going up like. What's my show, mate? I can say fuck if I want to. It's uh, seven hundred and fifty bucks. That, Robbie, seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred bucks for a set yeah. of bowls. Like, well, they need a yeah. Seriously, like, if you want a cheaper set, go to Lawn Bowls to you. They'll do a cheaper set, but um, let's make sure they're hands uh, That's all. <laughs> it's a crazy price they'd be paying for bowls these days. Like for four sets of bowl, you know, four bowls. It's you know, we'll we'll go on to like five hundred yeah. bucks, four ninety five for arrows. Like you know, not so long ago, it wouldn't even been eighteen months ago. Yeah. And now they're nearly like, well, you you get a custom set, they're like nearly a thousand bucks. Yeah. Like if you want to build your own bowl, like what the hell? Like who's gonna who who can afford that? Like if you yeah. want new people coming into the game, and you're selling bowls, like yeah, you, know, you get kitted up for nearly a grand by the time you pay for a bag and all the other shit that you got going on. Like it's yeah. a lot of coin, even especially if you're under. You know, if you're a junior or something like that. Yeah. Well, uh, it's crazy. Well, yeah. And look, there is a lot of a lot of these um, manufacturers that do a bit of sponsorship and that and for players, and particularly juniors and whatnot. But, um, yeah, like Aero, no wonder they're selling for a 1000 bucks. They need to pay all the sponsored players. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it breaks my balls, like the yeah. price. Yeah, so place everything. I don't want, you know, I don't you get a bag of like, some bread, some butter, some milk, some cereal, like... 130 bucks just for one single Woolworths bag of basic groceries. Like mm. the whole world is going to poo. I'm, I'm I'm cool with them going up, but I just don't think they should go up like 200 bucks in like 18 months. Like that's like a quarter of or a third yeah. of the price of a set of bowls going up. Like you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. But yeah, I guess crazy. that's why you see the yeah. the market flooded with a lot of secondhand bowls. Like you go on marketplace or. A lot of I people think, selling bowls. There's a lot of Aero secondhand sets out there for sale. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. if that means anything or not. But but if you're a young junior mm. and you're like sort of getting into the hunt of sort of making like you know certain sides or whatever, it's um it's a yeah. lot it's a lot to ask for. I guess the only the only upside to it if it like bowls do last a long time, like you buy a set for. Let's for argument's sake say it is a thousand dollars. Well, you get should do student prices. You get ten years out of it. That's hundred dollars a year. So it's not student too prices, bad, mate. I should do student prices. If you're fifteen or under, like your bowls become this much. Like yeah, and a lot, a lot of us. I know hence like get on board, get on board, and um, they sponsor a few juniors here and there, and I'm sure the other manufacturers do as well, and mm. particularly Drakes who are just coming back on the market after a bit of a. I tell you I what. Stint, which I, actually, speaking of which, I, I got a, a great young junior, uh, a couple of them at, at Musgrave Hill that could do a little bit of assistance in terms of new sets of bowls. Are in the hunt for them at the moment. So whether Henslight or uh, Drakes want to come on board because I do How believe they, they like need? the Drakes. Um, I think they're looking for size threes or possibly even fours. I think Jack Guy and uh, uh, Braden Buckets, we call him. A couple of the boys there. We had uh, me and Sammy White at a game with them social bowls Wednesday night a week or so ago. Great young kids, but it, like I said, it's expensive. You know, mum and dad can't go out and and spend uh, six or seven hundred dollars on a set of bowls when they're going to grow out of them. You're being know. kind, mate. They're more than that. Well, it's, yeah, it's trying to downplay you break my balls a little bit. <laughs> but no, you know, come and see me but, next week, boys. Come and see that sort of money. Well, I tell you what we, we should do next week. We'll do, oh, I tell you what. We've got Premier some League sets there. We're Premier League got some brand new sets of bowls. Next week we go to the finals. If you want to buy a set of bowls, we'll go 500 bucks a set. Yep, done. And uh, brand new sets of pencil light size fours. We'll do 500 a set you for the first. Size threes there. Or? I might have a couple of size threes, might, but mostly fours. I might fours. donate a couple of sets for the boys. A couple eh? of, yeah, we can do that too. Must is one of our uh, our sponsors. I'll bring them down. The finals host. So. I'll bring them down to the finals next week. If you want a set of bowls, 
uh, size threes and fours. I think we've got mostly fours, but there might be a couple of threes there. Mm. Uh, we'll do them for 500 a set, and uh, they're brand new sets, haven't been put out of their boxes yet. And uh, they're yours, 500 bucks. There you go, save 250 bucks a set of bowls. We'll sell them to uh, the first 10 people. Yep. And we'll give two to, sets to the young kids. Just to answer Bruce Kirk, uh, that's, they're the ones we're talking about, mate. <clears throat> yeah, just nothing to do with you anymore. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, what have we got next? Chat, finals, venues. Oh, no, we got shot of the round. Oh, shot mate. of the round. It's shot of the round. Scoop of the year. John Blackman, here we go. Oh, I thought you guys were going to forget about me on no, that one. No, no mate, that. come on. Mate, How could we? No, we? We had a few last week that uh, were replayed during the game, but there was one that stands out. Uh, it was one that Kenton Treacher played. He was at least four down. You're talking the about the head. nicest man in long balls? That's the one. Yep. Yep. Yeah, well, well uh, please make sure you state that when you mention <laughs> his name. Oh, sorry, sorry. Kent sorry. Treacher, one of the nicest <laughs> players in the game. Anyway, he, he played a very great game. Uh, he saved a lot of shots. He was absolutely humdinging. Yeah. But this, this end here, he was uh, at least four down. And he came down with his uh, last bowl, and this was the result. So at edge. Oh, what a great sweet. ball. Oh, oh wow. Well oh, well yes. done. Oh, true like that. Was he three down there? True no, Kent four down, four down. Four yeah. down. Put it, play it again. Could have been eight. Could have been eight. eight. He just, he, he'd Here play it every day. Here we go. Boom. Oh, what a great ball. Oh, get out of here. Eight. Mind you, just perfect way the jack didn't go too far there. Like, if he was an inch shorter, the jack would have went further because he would have got more ball on it. Yeah, but uh, I, I think next week, Robbie, uh, you're going to have a, a shot of the week. But are you going to collate all them and say you're going to have a shot of this season? Because there was one bloke that had a really good draw shot to the boundary peg on his forehand uh, midway through the year, mate. So there might be something to consider. I, <laughs> I do remember that. And I think it was on a ring one at some venue. Yeah. He's got to win something this year, right? right? He's got to touch win something. Touch straws, please. Give me something. Uh, here's a good thing, though. Uh, Colin... Um, Blaine, uh, he said that Toowoomba Bowl Shop give all their old bowls to disability services in Toowoomba. Nice. Ah, yep. That's a great that's, way to do things. fantastic. Well done. Yep. Well done, Toowoomba Bowls Club. Yeah, I know I use some old sets um, for coaching at the club at Muzzy. We, you know, you, it's good to have at least one set of every size because for a new bowler in particular, it's more about the sizing mm. of the bowl mm. more than anything else. But I... Yeah, firm believer a new bowler should learn with something wider rather than tighter. A new bowler yesterday that was using XD ones, been Ugh. playing the game for eight months. Like, oh, that's the last thing you want. Yeah, like, oh, you want to learn. The fundamentals of the game is taking grass, so you want to learn how to take grass before you do anything else. But, um, but yeah, I'm waffling again. So <laughs> back to you, uh, mate. I want to chat about the finals venue. Yes. So, Luan, talk we about are, what, what we is... We are ready. Like I said, we've made some improvement. We uh, we had feedback last year, which we've taken on board. and Let us let us pray for beautiful weather. Yeah, yeah fingers crossed. I have been meaning to contact um, this club, actually, just in, as a bit of a contingency plan in, in case we get bad weather. But I think uh, this time of year, you know, rain is rain. We don't usually get it to the point where greens are unplayable, so it'll take a fair bit for us to move it. But... Um, it's supposed to rain all next week, but I'm hoping that clears up by the yeah, weekend. Yeah, we, we've had lots of rain, and like I said, we've it's been steady enough that it makes things unpleasant, but it's not steady enough that it mm. makes the green unplayable. And as much as I like all the players involved, it, we're not going to move it just because they're a little bit uncomfortable. Um, oh no, no, you've got to be pooling, got to be pooling, so, got to be yeah. swimming in it. But um, um, no, we're ready. We like some no. brand new lights going in um, next week. We've got our brand new bowls office finished uh, which Robbie has seen and is very happy about and he's, he's got uh, all the connections he needs and a great little space where we'll be uh, doing a bit of commentary next week yeah, on Yeah I think right? we are I think we're doing Seeing as how we are spectators Since we're spectators I think we're doing a bit of getting a bit of Yahoo going a bit of banter a bit of and, banter uh, yes I can give it to Bakes about winning the tipping competition all, all day long well, and, uh, just, you know, Straws mate you clutch them Should be good Should be good <laughs> no, I'm looking forward to that I think we had a great time last year we got a lot of good feedback and uh, yeah. it's great jumping on and yeah. calling the game nice, um, It's a bit of fun change. we enjoy it and, um, I'll be there anyway is, uh, just to make sure the weekend's I'll, running I'll smoothly I'll also be there but, yeah. I'll be there um, Yeah everything's everything, we're on track shirt, I think, apparently I think we've thought on yeah 
I'll get your shirt right. But <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I think we've thought about everything we can, and uh, yeah, we're prepared. We've even got a little little treat, a couple of packets of Zupa Dupas there. So if it is hot, we'll be passing them around all the players while they're playing to keep them nice and cool. I have, I've um, ordered the um, beautiful cups and trophies from same sort of things as last year from Sun State Trophies. So yeah. Uh, a great trophy company up on the north side of Brisbane there who done such a fantastic job last year. I think the player of the final uh, from both grades will also again get a beautiful boxed up decanter set and uh, a couple of cups with engraving on it. So hmm. um, nice crystal decanter set that I'll try and bring on the show next week if I get them in time. And Yep. Um, Next week, have we got anyone special coming on the show next week, mate, or you want to let them uh, hang for that? Oh, we have got someone very special. Uh, <laughs> so a very special guest next week, which uh, I spoke to him earlier this week, and he's available, and he is locked in, so we'll hold him to that. He's going to owe me a six-pack if he pulls out, but no, we uh, we do have a very special guest, someone who's uh, very well-known, obviously, in the bowling world, very friendly, loves a beer, loves a chat. Um, and we should have a bit of fun with them. So. Yeah, I think we'll, we, I will hold the suspense. I, I think, think we'll have a few guests next week. I think we're going to try and get. Uh, we might have a little um, little interview. I might do something during the week with uh, with our chairman Wayne Hatchman. Um, he's like I said, we've spoken about briefly, and uh, his visions for bowls and just coming into finals week. Even and during the finals, we may uh, may get him in the box for a little bit get him in the uh, box we'll try and get bit, Shannon yeah. from uh, Smith & Co to have a bit of a chat that'd be lovely um, yeah. bring his skateboard in and um, and uh, we'll uh, I, I'm, I, there might be another special guest too I think uh, there might be a couple of bulls coming in next week so okay. we'll see we'll see thought you might have been getting Bruce Kirk in says uh, he made a little comment there so I won't read out anyway <coughs> probably he's having a read he'll have a laugh <coughs> <laughs> um, no, no, it should be good. Next week's, it will be. Last, it's be next week's the last again. week. Hopefully, the weather gods are kind because mm. the greens are going to be beautiful. Last um, show next week, mate. Hospitality is going to be magnificent. I've gotten to know all the staff. The staff are all fantastic. And yes, next week is our last show. Last show for the season. Uh, so, and, uh, last night, I'm uh, late home on a Thursday night. Sorry, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Hope the kids behaved. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Jana should have time next Thursday before the show to whip up one of those platters for us, mate. Chuck in the middle and uh, a platter for me, yeah. maybe. I'm not <laughs> sure about you, mate. You're pushing your luck there, buddy. But uh, nah, nah, all good. Nice. All right. Uh, well, mate, I'm looking forward to next week's show. I can't wait because it's finals weekend. Uh, mm. That's my favourite. Going to be a loss to talk about. Can't of... wait to see the result. I just want to know who the mm. five are. I know. You know. Get it out there. Get it out yep. the tie. See who's playing who. Yep. I have. Uh, I have been thinking day during the week about the finals and you know ring draws and all that because this year we've had um on i'll interrupt myself sorry wayne hatchman says six dollar schooners and eight dollar points at muzzy for premier league finals so just keep that in the back of your mind um but yeah i have been thinking during the week about the ring draws because this year obviously has been the first year we've been introduced the one two three system um with teams listing their skips Mm. but do we eradicate that for finals so we can have a blind ring draw so we get different matchups as opposed to teams playing the teams that have already played through the season? Or do we leave the one, two, three? So if any of the clubs that may be involved would throw their two bobs worth in, I'd be interested to see their response. But um, might something we can talk it? about uh, before. Yeah, I think that's something we need, do need to discuss because I am. Um, we'll find that by next week, I think. Personally, I'm a fan of the one, two, three systems. Great for the regular season, but once we get finals, it's a whole new kettle of fish, and I like to see some different games. Like I don't want to see. Mm. It'd be nice to close it off. Gary Kelly yeah. playing. Wait, because you could whoever cause you, again? Cause, like, yeah, because someone gets beaten and then they win, they come back and play that same exactly team right. again. You got the same games exactly again. Exactly the same rink up so, matchup. Yeah. So. I like that. I like the blind thing. But we'll talk to the clubs and see what they want to do. And, Michael um, Smith agrees. Eric is a random draw. Mm. Uh, John Walker says, Sorry, Bakes, I'll have to take a rain check as a guest next week. Oh, oh Johnny. Oh, we just mate, knew I'll just it was so you far for you to come. And everything, and you've, now you pulled out on me. So far for you to come, mate. <laughs> I probably just... shouldn't have pulled out on you, though. 
<laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, anyway, next yeah. week last show. Can't wait. Uh, love finals time. It's going to be awesome. Musty's going to be packed house, and uh, some of the best players in the world are going to be there. Mm-hmm. And uh, can't wait for it. It's going to be awesome. Get on down. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for next weekend, next week's show, and um, can't wait to have it. And uh, as a spectator, the blind draw is a good idea. So there you go, Colin. Uh, just had a couple of good comments tonight, Colin. I like this hey, guy. Colin, fire right. up, mate. Yeah. Good man. Uh, it's been pretty quiet right, on the comments mate. stage. Thanks for coming back, Bakesy. Thanks, Thank you Robbie. very much. Have, thanks pleasure. to our sponsors, Smith & Co., Paradise Point Bowls Club, Musgrave Hill, Lawn Bowls to you, BCIB. And um, can't wait to uh, see you next week. Um, have a great week. Make sure you get out to the round, see who comes in the top five. And uh, it could be your club's last chance of hosting some games this weekend, so get out there and watch them. And uh, say hi to your mum for me. Mom, mom.